Hello folks and welcome to another daily Bitcoin market analysis by Inspo Crypto. We will start today again with an initial comment and um, yeah, I, I'm going to split it in free content and premium content. Um, so I will go a little bit deeper in premium and but however, the, the, the content will be similar. Okay, I'm not going to hide any kind of crucial information, just to make it clear. However, let us start. We will start first of all with uh, the de de decision by the Bank of Japan. Uh, the governor um, just said, hey, we are keep doing what we are doing. So we keep, we let our wallet uh, really wide open for carry trades. So even the inflation in Japan is rising, even the service inflation is rising, even that's bringing some pain to their economy and industry, they don't care. They don't care. And yeah, that's in my opinion, I don't know if that's dumb as fuck or if they are making some favors to maybe not their right friends. I, I really don't don't get that. But however, uh, they that's the decision and we will talk about that. So let us start and take a look what is happening to the Japanese inflation. First of all, what we see here, for example, is the Japan service PMI. And the service PMI in Japan, as you can see, it's not declining. It was declining since October. It went down a little bit. Um, just what what is that? Uh, something like at 50. Afterwards in January, it went up once again because we they had a rise in wages, an average rise in wages of 4.8% just within one month. <laughs> That's actually at least for a country that depends a little bit of exports, not really the best case, right? However, um, the BOJ just mentioned in the beginning, well, the big problem we have is that the yen related, so compared to the USD, is looking weak. Because of course, when uh, the Fed started to be hawkish, the US dollar... Uh, started to push up and uh, the yen started to decline. So they said one of the main um, factors why the inflation in Japan is rising was the weak yen. Okay, right. Well, they started to sell treasury bonds, US treasury bonds, to buy, for example, to invest their money in their own currency. That's something where I would say, okay, I'm fine with that. So the yen went up but the inflation is not declining. So the big question is, why not? Because of service inflation. Many people don't know what is service inflation. You will find services everywhere, everywhere. So 50 years ago, the service uh, economy or the service sector of our economy was relatively small related to today. Today, everything every little sector it doesn't mean if it's industry or whatever you will find services it is a service uh, if you go to the bank that's a service so everything related to services just really everything has an impact to the whole economy so you know so really even if for example, for logistics that can have also if you if you need to refinance your 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 carpool and your bank costs more because the service fees is going up and so on and so forth, that has an impact. It makes almost between 50 to 60 percent of almost um, in some economies less and some ec economies more but almost 50 to 60 percent of every economy so if the service inflation maintains and goes up it's really really hard sorry so 
you can imagine that that's one of the main factors, also in Japan. So meanwhile, I was a little bit expecting, hey, okay, that's not going to work. All what we tried to do failed. The inflation is going up more and more and more. And it starts to have also an impact to our economy, to our industry. However, they don't care. It seems they don't care. They are still... Well, why is that really important? Well, I mean, you can imagine if the Fed is trying to reduce the circulating USD supply and Japan and China is just selling treasury bonds, you can imagine what happens. So also the inflation in the US will not decline, even if the Fed is being hawkish and they are saying right now, even they are expecting just to raise the interest rates by 25 PPS next uh, meeting maybe 50 but I guess 25 PPS they are now thinking about okay we need to raise rates even more and that's a really big problem also for the Fed why in my opinion the Bank of Japan I don't know what they are doing what is their plan they are now talking about energy costs I we just check the charts for crude oil or gas. They are talking about an old story. I mean, it's more possible that the energy costs go up again with an escalation in the Russian and Ukraine conflict, for example. So they are making a bet that's almost all in. It doesn't make sense, but they are doing it. And that also means that some global companies, BlackRock, I don't know, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and so many institutionals out there, they can keep getting cheap money in Japan and use them uh, to gamble on Wall Street or other markets as well. That's what they call carry trades. It is what it is. We will see how far they want to go, but yeah, it is not cool at all. However, now let us go to the next chapter because I was, uh, not since today, but since a few days, um, people indicating, hey, we see a decoupling trend between Bitcoin and SPY, so SP500 and so on and so forth. Yes, indeed, I, I can see that as well, but they replaced, it seems, SPY, and that's really a huge multi, I mean, that's really a huge asset with big, big volume moving. It's it's almost the biggest, the biggest, I, I'm not sure, but I think it is maybe the biggest asset or one of the top 10 uh, related to the um, daily volume. A monthly volume. Um, however, um, I will show you what happens after the decoupling between PTC and SPY. So let us take a look here. I need to change the chart and I will show you that here. Maybe you see that. Uh, I need my epic, wonderful pan here and we can see uh, the price went down, also Bitcoin. Then it went up, also Bitcoin. Then it went down once again, until here, also Bitcoin. That was something like a local bottom. And then afterwards it went up again. Oh, look, also Bitcoin. That's the one hour time frame. We are not talking about one day, one week, one year, whatever. It's one hour one hour time frame. Now look, memes are pushing up very hard, means, hmm, I think Bitcoin is going to do exactly the same. Just let us see if that's going to happen, but I would make even a bet for that. So it looks like that those who are investing here in meme stocks, meme stocks ETF, that's also a future asset, are I don't know why. I think because they are using meme stocks and bitcoins for their trades, gambling trades. 
And <laughs> it's the famous meme stock stocks that only go up, apparently. And <laughs> maybe that makes sense that someone thought, hey, if that's only going up, then we should couple both. I don't know if that's the case, but if you take a look here, it, it's really incredible um, how, how the both assets correlate each other. Now, I guess you are asking, what? Meme stocks? What the hell are meme stocks? Yeah, you are absolutely right. Right, I would make exactly the same question. If we take a look, what is behind meme stocks? We can see all the stocks behind this wonderful ETF. We have AMC, DraftKings, Virgin Galactic, Upstart, I don't know, I'm Coinbase, oh look, Coinbase, oh, GameStop, Cloudflare, Tesla, Robinhood, Peloton, Enphase Energy, I don't know, Sophie Technologies, Blackberry, oh Jesus, Blackberry, Blackberry was cool 20 years ago, um, Snap, Nordstrom, yeah, uh, yeah. What should I say? I mean, we remember that Tesla was pushing up from one day to another like hell, right? So absolutely not volatile, but that's it. That's it. So let us see if now Bitcoin once again is going to follow what the mammoth stock is doing. Just pushing up means maybe back to 25 or 20,600 like we did already. It's possible. Let us take a look. So then let us talk about what's happening here. Well, pff, once again, the uh, one day time frame on weights ratio don't want to break this area and it maintains above a 43. 43, uh, 43 is actually great, <laughs> better than 50, however, that means 43 would be here as that is a 30 days moving average and we were so high all the time it means it will only if it maintains now at that area between 40 45 or something then it will start to decline more and more and more otherwise it will maintain such an uh, level and that's just indicating us they are just sending more and more bitcoins they are sending it's it's they are distributing more and I have said just a few days ago, in my opinion, they will um, shift to a lower level because at 25 the uh, demand was shrinking and I noticed that when uh, retailers started just to sell instead to buy. While they are still using more futures than spot, also indicating, hmm, it's not the same like we had just before, so it seems that retailers are not reacting as expected. So uh, usually then the price should decline a little bit more to trigger some demand while they keep doing it. So they are still working a lot with futures and it seems now related to BUSD they can trade BUSD, so buy BUSD Bitcoin. I really don't know who is doing it after Paxa stopped issuing BUSD, to be honest. I, I, I really don't know. I mean, yeah, Cumberland, maybe. I mean, these guys are pff, not, 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 not even a little bit better than uh, Alameda or FTX. Um, but however, they are using this opportunity with premium, so they are making they are making uh, good money with that, and selling BTC then um, with USDT, and so swapping while making a nice profit at the same time. The question is, how how much money they have, how many times they will do it? Nobody knows that. So, but it's it's. You know, it looks so desperate, everything. It looks so, they they are <laughs> at the same time so creative. 
Uh, but yeah, it's it's incredible. For me, it's just incredible, but it is what it is, right? So we need to see. If we go forward, for example, uh, we can see that um, the stablecoin reserves on on um, on central exchanges declined and lifted up. We also see here that the weights ratio 30 hours moving average is just maintaining 80, 85. So that, that's also very interesting. Uh, usually, you know, it's not maintaining. It goes up, it goes down, but not maintaining. So also very interesting what's happening here. I didn't check the data before just to make it clear. So we, we, we see the same at the moment and um, I need to interpret uh, now th all the information and data uh, at the same time. So if I take a look, for example, here, once again, it wasn't big, but they sent less, indicating we want to push up, then they go up again and the price starts to fall. Even if it's not the same like here, but also indicating, huh, they the market is once again in control of you if we take a look here for example uh i would say yeah it's it's still making um higher lows and yeah declining a little bit making lower highs but it's just the range is is just becoming yeah smaller but that's it however here nothing to see at the moment it seems well we will play that game uh for a while nobody knows how long but we'll see what the meme stock is going to do and maybe then we have a trend if the meme stocks goes up then we will go it seems more up if the meme stocks goes down then you know what's going to happen so if you know, the demand for meme stocks goes down and it's in a discount, uh, the opportunity that it goes up afterwards. But it depends also on all these companies related to the ETF, like oh, what I said, AMC, like Tesla, you know, all these guys, all these companies. So let us go forward. So then let us see also here, as you can see, nothing big, really absolutely nothing. If we compare that, even that wasn't big, not, not that big where I would say that's huge. Do you remember 2022? Jesus, we had there pff, tons of Bitcoins coming in, sometimes 10,000, 15 in one hour. Now we are talking, let us see, that's today, the biggest was 940 Bitcoins. But also because, you know, even <laughs> the volume looks great on Binance, just generating 98% of the spot volume in whole crypto space, something that, I mean, it, it, yeah. If, if, if you believe that, then what should I say? But I don't believe that. I, I really, I think they're just generating wash trading, attracting uh, whales and, and retailers because many are saying, oh, th there's the liquidity, look, the volume, right? I, I don't believe that. I really don't believe that. Even, even after yesterday's, um, you know, uh, financial report by <laughs> Coinbase, uh, that was looking terrible, really terrible. But in my opinion, if Coinbase looks terrible, uh, is Binance spot market looking much better? Well, at least we can say that Coinbase doesn't have a derivative market. So of course, some people will go there, but at the same time, Binance doesn't have a USD pair, something that, for example, Bitfinex has and even Coinbase. Anyway, um, doesn't look uh, big at the moment. If I check that, we received 270 million here. That was this morning. And um, yeah, so I would be careful. Not sure why. I mean, we are receiving 270 millions. 
doesn't mean those 270 millions are related to Bitcoin, could be Bitcoin, Ethereum and other alts, nobody knows that. But anyway, um, that's what we can see at the same time, almost no outflows at the moment, but that, that's almost it. So let us go forward. So if we take a look here, also very interesting funding rate was declining here and then pushed up very hard. Now maintaining also indicating, hmm, someone started uh, to demand a lot of longs at 24,400. Uh, it's going to be interesting. At the same time, we can see what the open interest did at the same time declined pushed up and declined more. And if we take a look, for example, here, that's the leverage ratio declined, pushed up, declined again, pushed up and declined. So also here indicating, it seems they liquidated some uh, high leverage positions. And yeah, some volatility came back. We will see a whole that will end. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Some people are saying, is the local top is that already it's it's <laughs> under the current uh, circumstances it's, it's almost impossible to tell you that uh, we really need to track all this information over and over and over again and in my in my opinion i'm still absolutely convinced that whole rally is an exit liquidity rally and they use this really using mainly futures supporting it with spot just to push up with BUSD. That was the initiation and the beginning of the year. Then they start to flip again um, to USDT and to USDC. And yeah, we will see. I mean, how, how long they will play this game. But in my opinion, I always said, you know, when you see such a formal, such formal candles, green candles, that in my opinion, the only goal they have is to create formal, it will go down exactly in the same way how it went up. Even at the moment doesn't look like, because at the moment it really looks like uh, these guys want to distribute as much as they can. All right. However, um, we will see. If we take a look now here, for example, we can see 100 millions inflow and 60 millions outflow related to derivative exchanges. Absolutely, it's not even worth to talk about. That's really low. If we go forward, we can see here, for example, 1,940 Bitcoins inflows, 2,000 uh, Bitcoins outflows related to derivative exchanges. Also here indicating they are starting to take profit the question is from what? From longs, from shorts? Mm, I can't see that. I really can't see that. Even the funding rate can 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 show me that. Um, it's it's really hard to say, to be honest. So, however, let us go forward. We can see at least that the open interest went up. The funding, uh, the leverage ratio also. And the funding rate, the aggregated, maintains positive, indicating they are still demanding longs. Even in the short term, they started to demand more shorts and why the price is declining now. So, um, yeah, if we take also a look here, yesterday, 1000, almost 1600 Bitcoins wrecked. Um, long long uh, futures um, liquidated and almost 400 short futures so 400 bitcoins also liquidated here now let us go forward to blockchain whispers and yeah 62 to 38 i mean it's absolutely still st yeah still still not not looking healthy so i i don't know they they are really expecting from here moon or something uh and here related to ethereum doesn't look better 60 to 40 um 
on Bitfinex, yeah, longs not rising and shorts as well. I, I think it looks even similar to, to yesterday, so nothing have changed. Now let us take a look to the Kingfisher. And, oh, okay, I don't know, it's new all leverage. So all leverage, it seems we are creating a 24600 again, a high leverage positions. Uh, we have 180 liquidation would be the maximum. While if I take a look, the maximum would be here with 150 millions liquidation cluster at 35,800. So yeah, I would say mid to low leverage, leverage uh, low leverage short positions. And the biggest part would be on the long side with 100 million at almost 17K. So if we take now high leverage, I guess it's more uh, part of the shorts. Oh, okay, it's going to be interesting now. So let us have some volatility between 23,600 and 24,600. 1,000. Yeah, not bad to make some swings. Why only 6 million in maximum uh, liquidation cluster 5.5 .5 million and 24,300? So 24,300 should be also a very interesting uh, a very interesting level to liquidate all these high leverage positions. Let us go forward. So we can see that the trend is at the moment clear. Very clear. PUSD. It's so ridiculous. Even USD. And we, we will check how much is that. Let me turn all these here off and start again. Price range, yes. So let us take a look from here to here. Um, it's the same here, so it's it's exactly the same. Talking, wow, 212 millions in negative CVD. Oh, okay, even more, sorry. Uh, 220 millions, yeah. The aggregate, it's even a little bit higher, 22, uh, 20, 227 millions. That's BUSD, almost 30 million negative CVD. Now here that's USD, almost 38 million in negative CVD. Now Bitcoin collateral. Oh, okay. I mean, it's 550 million. That's, that's a lot. And here is stablecoin related. Wow, three billions, three billions in futures and, and negative CVD. That's that's big. <laughs> three billions while almost sixty. Let us say three hundred millions in negative CVD with spot. It's ten percent of those three billions. Well, what should I say? However, uh, BTC BUSD, I don't know who the hell is still trading with BUSD. The aggregate, it looks different. Once again, it, it looks like, you know, someone is still using BUSD to, to I, I guess it's Cumberland. I guess they are using this premium stuff just to make profit and swap to USDT at the same time. Uh, but it's, yeah, because they, Cumberland is a specialist like Alameda and Algo trading. So, you know, um, if we go forward, Bitfinex, clear message, Q 
keeps distributing and follows the aggregated one. Bybit also doing the same distribution. Coinbase, interesting, pushed up, now declining. Bitstamp almost doing exactly the same like Coinbase. Okay, interesting. Uh, Kraken pushing up and now declining. Also interesting what I tweeted today about Kraken because it seems that Kraken is one of the main USDT supplier at the moment for the market. So they are sending Kraken whales or whoever it is behind is sending USDT large amounts of USDT from Kraken all the time to Binance. If we take a look, for example, here, Gemini now uh, declining, also distributing. So let us go forward. Let us check here. Let us start with stable coins. Um, okay, so USDT showing here, for example, uh, they are taking profit after they were one of the main stable coin that it seems pushed up the price here with 33 millions and here also maintaining the price and then they started to sell and now taking profit here almost 50 millions if we go to usdc doing exactly the same usdc for example here 50 millions uh inflow another 50 millions here and that's very interesting because we can see that, uh, for example, I think Bitstamp and Coinbase doing exactly the same. So it seems someone on Coinbase is really uh, making, yeah, just, I don't know if trying or pushing, but something is happening here. Also very interesting what you, what, for example, the market maker is doing. The market maker is declining here. That's really low time frame. And now retailers sincere starting to push up. So also interesting. Now let us take in a larger time frame what the market maker is doing. Yeah, it's declining more. Once again, also very interesting. Nothing looks here like accumulation. Uh, by the market maker, let us uh, show all the different entities once again. So we have a complete picture of what's happening at the moment. Retailers. Uh, well, they pushed up a little bit, now declining again. This guy's pushing up. Lifting up a little bit. This guy's declining. As mentioned, market maker not doing anything. This guy is pushing up a little bit. Yeah, this guy is not doing anything and that's it. So, yeah, very, very quiet, quiet everything. Um, then we can see here, for example, also very interesting. Um, if you check that, all the that's actually you can see since October 2021 until today and we have here for example we have here weights transactions count with more than 100k USD declining 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 but we also need to see and say not only see but also say oh, I take white that it was declining even more here and then it pushed up a little bit, right? Now declining again. So if we take, for example, a look to those guys here, you can see that as well, that weight trans uh, transactions count with more than 1 million did exactly the same. So we have the Bitcoin price here and also here you can see that's only the way transaction count related to bitcoins and that looks like that these guys are really unloading 
so it's they stopped they stopped in December and they started again in January in in the beginning of the year <laughs> interesting isn't it uh, you have that here so they started here now we had here something you know and then they pushed up more and their peak was on February 15th and since then it's declining again we will see its early stage to make uh, a big conclusion about that but if it maintains I would say you know it pushed up here once again and now declining so also indicating for example here it was really almost very low and however uh, still transaction counts with more than one million dollar still happening at that moment indicating they are selling instead of buying uh, otherwise they are so stupid that they miss the dip and they prefer to buy a 25k <laughs> so that's it let us take a look here oh oh that, that's something i missed uh, we need to check let us take also a look here and then we will stop for today at least here with this chapters so okay another 800 bitcoins coming from market maker another 600 bitcoins here and still one and it's it's they are unloading they are just unloading they are selling and selling and selling we take a look for example yesterday kraken whales pushed up okex as well and who is that okay that is bitstamp while gemini was reducing bitphoenix as well even binance nothing big coinbase reducing and so on and so forth so they are maintaining as mentioned they are just maintaining that's the whole thing also here nothing to see also here uh, they are declining once again their fund holds and look what's happening here look as mentioned it's bouncing spot is coming in again retailers active yeah baby it seems they are buying again and that's what I, what I said as soon they shift to a lower level they will find demand so it's possible that we will maintain a 24k like some option traders are expecting however well, we are done here let us go forward so then let us take a look here for example uh, that's coinbase on coinbase they are still waiting here 23k otherwise also here um, still protecting 25k um, otherwise you know a little bit something at 23 500 but nothing big so I still think 23k bounce up maybe again 25k and then hopefully, hopefully finally something big hitting up or down because then we have a 20k and 27k uh, still some um, yeah volume there waiting. Now Bitstamp, uh, Bitstamp you remember is doing something similar like Coinbase. If we take a look here, for example, they are waiting at 23 otherwise protecting 22600 uh, everything below of 216 uh, starts to be uh, a big challenge otherwise they are waiting there i don't know i mean i'm talking i'm 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 showing you that but i don't even know if that's spoofing it could be also spoofing right however uh 26k here and a lot of stuff waiting to the upside eminvesting.com was today i mean these guys are <laughs> the most biased analyst you can imagine uh, because every time these guys are talking about bitcoin it's almost moon 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 ignoring everything uh i i really don't don't get that however but they 
launched or released today an article saying yeah 30k is the next uh, the next uh, level I don't see that yet I mean if they keep using futures they can even go to 1 million uh, but it's a question of liquidity you know and liquidity is not cheap anymore so we will see Binance BTC USDT uh, as said today they are still protecting all area between 25,500 and almost 24,600 at the same time everything between um, yeah uh, 23,400 and 23 as well also waiting here and we bounce here twice uh, right now waiting here as well can happen that we go up and down again that's that's something you know at least we have a nice trading range to swing trades. Uh, BTC BUSD, I shouldn't care about, but as it maintains a life, uh, we have here 23,500, um, uh, 156 Bitcoin wall, and also still at 25K. So also if they want to let trigger all these walls, just to convert uh, to USDT, for example, I don't know, then they should go up. But I mean, if they sell here, it's obviously just selling in BUSD. So I, I think they buy with um, BUSD and they sell just with USDT to make this uh, whole swap, um, yeah, profitable for them. Also, Bitfinex still waiting here between 25,300 and 25,500. Also waiting here 22,560. I don't see anything in 23, nothing big, otherwise 21,6. OKEX, let's just take a look to OKEX. Nothing. OKEX swap. Nothing. Kraken, Kraken waiting at 23 as well. To the upside, nothing big, just here a little bit and even here 23.5, but they reduced liquidity there. So it looks like they want to let the price go down. BTC USD on buy but nothing, BTC USDT on buy but nothing, BitMEX. Bitmax waiting at 22,800. So I, I still think between 23 and 22,800 should be the local bottom. Uh, now, PERP. So they, <laughs> that looks horrible. As the main driver of the price at the moment keeps being, um, yeah, keeps being uh, futures. Uh, you can see what they are doing. They are just, you know, um, longing here all between 23.8 and 22.7, 22.8. So if they push hard to the downside with spot, they will trigger all these orders here. Uh, BTC BUSD perp also related to Binance doing almost the same. In my, in my opinion, that's Binance. In my opinion, they are still using BUSD, but it's my opinion. BTC perp related to um, Bitfinex waiting here at 25,500 almost and here as well 23,3. Otherwise 25. Kraken futures, nothing. OKEX futures, nothing. Deribit, Deribit 24700, 24700, uh, waiting there to short. Pfft, the next bigger wall at 20k on Deribit. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> 